The Norwich Freedom Trail is a part of the Walk Norwich Trail System and celebrates Norwich's rich and diverse story of African American heritage, highlighting notable people who played important roles in the movement to end slavery and advance civil rights before and after the United States Civil War. This courageous cast of individuals, including men, women, and children, ranges from former slaves to progressive educators, humanitarians, elected officials, and civic leaders. All found ways, some quietly, others in the public forum, to fight for liberty and human dignity in an era of social and political upheaval. One of those individuals was Sarah Harris. When Sarah Harris, a member of one of Jail Hill's prominent abolitionist families, entered Prudence Crandall's all-white female academy in nearby Canterbury at age 20, the school was forced to close. Crandall reopened with an academy exclusively for African-American girls with Sarah and her younger sister Mary both attending the school. In the aftermath of the school's violent closure, the Harris sisters continue to lead accomplished and impactful lives fighting for equality. Join us as we examine the Harris sisters' remarkable resilience in the face of adversity. Sarah Harris was an abolitionist who played a transformative role in challenging the lack of educational opportunities available for young African-American girls. She was born in Norwich to parents William Harris Sr. and Sally Prentice, who lived on Broadway. While Sarah never lived in the Jail Hill neighborhood, her brother Charles lived at 30 Cedar Street, and her brother William lived at 34 Cedar Street, and Sarah attended the Second Congregational Church on Church Street. Sarah's brother, Charles Harris, was a subscription agent for The Liberator, a radical abolitionist newspaper founded by William Lloyd Garrison in 1831. In 1832, Charles Harris was engaged to Anne Mariah Davis, a servant of Prudence Crandall, whose Canterbury Female Boarding Academy was open only to white students. Through Mariah Davis, Crandall was introduced to Charles' sister, Sarah Harris. Sarah convinced Prudence Crandall to admit her as a student. After heated opposition from parents led to threats of withdrawing their students, Crandall opened her school in April of 1833 exclusively for African-American young women and girls. Supported by William Lloyd Garrison, Crandall advertised in The Liberator. Young African-American students traveled from several nearby states to attend the school. Sarah Harris remained Crandall's pupil and was joined by her sister Mary. The school faced numerous instances of harassment and Crandall spent a night in jail for violating Connecticut's 1833 Black Law, specifically passed to shut down her academy, which made it illegal for out-of-state African-Americans to receive an education without local approval. Crandall was brought to trial three times and convicted before the case was dismissed on a technicality. In September 1834, after an angry mob attacked the school, Crandall officially closed the academy for the safety of her students. In 1995, Prudence Crandall was named Connecticut State Heroine. The school, a National Historic Landmark and Archaeological Preserve, is open to the public as the Prudence Crandall Museum, located at 1 South Canterbury Road in Canterbury, Connecticut. Sarah Harris married George Fairweather Jr., a mixed-race blacksmith, on November 28, 1833. The couple resided briefly in New London before ultimately moving to Kingston, Rhode Island to be closer to George's family. Both Sarah and George were active in the anti-slavery movement and their home served as a stop on the Underground Railroad. The Fairweathers frequently entertained prominent abolitionists such as William Lloyd Garrison and Frederick Douglass, and Sarah participated in anti-slavery conventions. Sarah Harris Fairweather gave birth to a daughter on September 9, 1834, which coincidentally was the same day Prudence Crandall School was attacked by a mob. Their daughter was named Prudence Crandall Fairweather after Sarah's beloved teacher. Sarah remained in contact with Prudence Crandall over the years, and in 1877, Sarah journeyed west to visit her former school teacher in Kansas. Sarah died in Kingston, Rhode Island in 1878. A building on the campus of the University of Rhode Island is named after her. Mary Harris was 16 years old when she followed her older sister Sarah to Crandall's school. After receiving her education, Mary became a teacher and married Paluman Williams in 1845. A teacher and abolitionist, Williams was originally from Norwich and served as the president of the 1849 Connecticut Convention of Colored Men. During the Civil War, the couple moved to New Orleans with their children to educate formerly enslaved African Americans. They both became educators at Strait College, which was a historic black college founded in 1868. Now it is known as Dillard University. As a young teenager, Sarah Harris broke a barrier as the first black woman to enter one of Connecticut's prestigious academies for privileged, well-to-do young white women. 
Both Sarah and Mary were trailblazers and paved the way for African American students to achieve an education equal to white students. If you'd like to learn more about the Harris sisters' legacy, please visit the Prudence Crandall Museum located in Canterbury, Connecticut. If you'd like to learn more about the Walk Norwich Freedom Trail, please visit walknorwich.org. Thank you.